Our journey through the GAC is beginning to wind down, and today's stop is Magnolia. We get to visit with the head men's basketball coach of the Southern Arkansas Mule Riders, Coach Andy Sharp, in his 10th season with the program. Coach, last season, I would say it was it was a fairly successful season. I mean, you're still playing into the postseason as well. 15 and 6 overall, 12 and 8 in the, or excuse me, 12 and 4 in the Eastern Division of the Great American Conference. Good enough for a tie at the top spot right there. Come up just a little bit short, and I mean just a little bit short in the GAC Tournament Championship, falling by a point to the arch-rival Bull Weevils there. It was, a, it was really a game going on the same time as the Women's Championship, too. Both of them mirroring one another just back and forth throughout the whole thing. But you do make it to the NCAA Tournament as well, into the opening round there, too. So, Coach, uh, a lot to talk about from last year bringing us to where we are now yeah uh joey we're I, i'm actually excited to talk about today um last year for the last time i hope you know we, <laughs> we we've talked about it and we had a great season and um the way it ended was was really disappointing in a lot of ways you know we we were fortunate first of all to even have a season uh, i felt like our administration here at sau did a great job of, of getting us a season, you know, it, it, even if we got to play, a, you know, five games, it would have been, it would have been a blessing, you know, so um, the administration really did a good job of getting us to the floor and, and doing it safely. Um, even though we had to stay in state lines, I thought it was a, a grueling season in a lot of ways with, you know, just the uncertainty of what each day would, would hold. Will we be able to practice? Will we be able to play? Who Who's going to be healthy? Um, we dodged COVID for the most part. We had a couple a couple shutdowns, but nothing that, that made us lose any games off of the schedule, which was from our standpoint, which was which was awesome. Thought our guys did a really good job of trying to to take it seriously, to wear a mask, to social distance. Uh, you know, we asked 18 to 22 year old kids to change their lives um, so that we could have a season. And uh, you know, I felt our, our guys did a good job of that, um, you know, to to go through the Arkansas side of the schedule, um, you know, at the beginning of the year, you know, you probably look at it and say, hey, the, the Western side was a little a little tougher, um, maybe from top to bottom. But I'll tell you, uh, I thought the East really, really showed up um, throughout the year and then into the postseason. I thought the Eastern side of the, of the division was uh, was tough. And, um, you know, you, you have Monticello and Henderson and Harding and Wachita and Tech. I mean, it was just a one right after the other. You, you know, you're not sure where your next win is going to come. To be honest with you, um, so to to dodge COVID for the most part and then to to have some success uh, in a really weird year was was awesome. Um, you know, to win a win a share of the Eastern Division uh, championship was was cool. To finally cut down a net inside W T Watson was cool, um, and then to you know, to go on the road and, and beat Oklahoma Baptist there in a really tough environment with, a you know, such a great program. And Coach Eaker does a, an amazing job there. Um, and then to, to play Monticello, who, who is, you know, our arch rival, um, our sister school, and to, to lose it the way we did was heartbreaking. Um, you know, we, we stayed healthy for the most part all year until the first half of that game where Devontae Brooks – one of the best post players to play in the GAC ever, you know, broke his, his shooting hand, his, his the wrist on his shooting hand. And, um, you know, to, to have to play the rest of that game shorthanded um, without, without Devonte at full strength. And then, you know, fortunate to get a bid to the NCAA tournament and then to, to not have him full strength there. He played, but he was braced up. It was just, it was just disheartening the way it ended to have it rolling so well. And then to have it kind of fall apart at the very end was tough. Um, you know, but you know, one, one positive that we did gain from COVID is, you know, these guys have, you know, we're given a year back and, and to have, to have these guys return um, when there were so many of their peers transferring, even within the league transferring and trying to, to go other places. Uh, I think it really speaks to the, um, to, to our program and to the um, the level of commitment that we have to one another, uh, to have Aaron Lucas and and Devontae and Jalen and and all the others uh, decide that they were going to come back and, and give it another shot was 
was really encouraging to me. So we're we're very hopeful this year. I think Kelly Kelly says it best there at Southeastern Hope Springs Eternal this time of year. And uh, and and I, I completely agree with that. Well, there are a lot of things that uh, Kelly Green says that are always pretty interesting, too. He'll definitely keep <laughs> you on your toes. That's that's for sure. Uh, yep. Coach, I don't know if I have the authority to do this. I'll just go ahead and make an executive decision and say we are now officially closing the book on last season, so you don't I have to talk about that anymore. <laughs> let's, I appreciate let's, it. Let's move on. I, you know, I, if I have the authority to do that or not. Anyway, Aaron <laughs> Lucas comes back for you, a, a number of players, by the way, and, and this is something that uh, opponents – uh, GAC opponents really, I'm sure, are, are uh, maybe a little bit uh, disheartened about. Not only you get Lucas back, averaging 17.1 points a game, like Rogers comes back as well, and both Brooks brothers come back for you. Devontae and Jalen averaging 13.1, 12.1, respectively, scoring. But how about this? Both of them averaging nearly nine rebounds a game, too. So that that's uh, that's got to be encouraging now as we, we're talking now about this season. Sure. You know, we, we have 10 guys coming back from last year. And uh, I know a lot of schools have a lot of guys coming back, but to have 10 guys come back and and uh, Devontae and, and Aaron having been in the program now for five years um, and, and to have Jalen in the program now for four and then many others that have been here for two and three, um, I tell you, it makes practices a lot, a lot better as you're trying to turn the page from one year to the next and they have an idea of how we're, you know, trying to do things. Uh, off the floor as well as on the floor so to have to have that many guys coming back is is really uh, is really neat um you know it, it definitely doesn't hurt to have the pre you know the the player of the year coming back and aaron lucas um you know uh, an interesting story with with him you know he he hadn't even made an an, an all-conference team prior to last year you know he's been in the in the league for four years i think that speaks to the level our league has been at uh, over the past four or five years, but Aaron hadn't even sniffed an all-conference team nomination, uh, honorable mention, anything like that. And for him to to bring home the most prestigious award, um, individual award of the of the year, was was awesome and a testament to his ability to work. Um, I think he'd probably tell you he's most proud of his defensive player of the year award. Um, he's just a ball hawk and, and gets up under your chin and, and um, really changes the game defensively. Uh, and then you throw in, you know, the Brooks brothers that um, just make stuff happen. You know, the, I, I wish I could take some credit for for, <laughs> for, for them, how they play. Um, you know, we, we've added some skill to what they do, but those guys, they play with an incredible motor. Um, there, there is no rebound that is out of play to them. You know, they, they're chasing it. And, uh, you know, I think it really gives our, our other players a sense of, well, I'm I'm going to let this shot ride because if we, if I don't make it, Jalen or Monte are going to get the rebound. So I think it really builds confidence with the rest of the guys. So those three guys are are you know are going to carry a lot of the weight uh, like they did last year. And and then I, I think Blake Rogers um, is really kind of an unsung guy from last year's team that uh, was a great piece to to what we did. How he plays really fits in well with how we want to try to do things. He's highly skilled. And, um, you know, can really shoot the three. So um, I tell you, a couple guys that we're really looking forward to to hopefully taking a step for us this year are Victor Riri and Chris Weish, both returned from last year's team. Both played uh, – I think Chris started most of our games and Vic came off the bench. Uh, we're really looking for one of those guys to really take a step this year, hopefully both guys. Um, you know, we're expecting those guys to, to really be heavily in the rotation to, to – to you know, put up more points uh, in the point column, um, and then Jesse Davis is a guy that's been in the program for many years now, and uh, has has had to kind of wait his time behind Devonte, um, and we're we're expecting Jesse to take a step this year as well for us. We're speaking now with with Coach Sharp from Southern Arkansas. The Mule Riders picked second according to the preseason coaches poll here in the GAC, and and. Uh, talking about all those returning players again, a, a strong cast returning, but you have some new faces as well. And uh, tell us about uh, some of those that have been brought into the program here now in Magnolia. Uh, Kendall Fair is a, is a true freshman from Odie White, the Fort Worth area. Um, we're not quite sure where he's going to fit in yet this year. He's a tremendous talent. Uh, he's he's kind of in the same mold as Aaron Lucas. He's kind of a smaller, undersized guard, 
uh, really dynamic and shifty, can can really shoot it. Uh, so we're we're excited to have Katie in the program. Um, Ty Archibald is a transfer um, from really good basketball pedigree. Um, averaged about 17 a game last year uh, at his junior college. Can really shoot the three. Um, and we were looking for guys that can continue to spread the floor, can can be highly skilled and, and, and knock down shots. So Ty is is going to be a guy that uh, that's going to get a good hard look at some minutes, um, as well as another returner, Connor Harvey. I, sh- I probably should have mentioned Connor earlier, but uh, Connor and Ty are, are really battling f- with Blake Rogers now, now uh, for some minutes at the wing. Um, so we, we feel like we really have some – uh, some competition going, which is good for everybody. You know, every day is an opportunity to to create some separation between you and the next guy. So we've had some really spirited practices and and uh, and hope that those will continue because I feel like it, it makes everybody better. I, I agree, Coach. Internal internal competition like that, especially when it's done well, is is something that can benefit a program definitely and and especially when then you get to play some folks with some other color jerseys on sure they're 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 prepared to go well you start the season in kansas city in some good regional competition augustana and northern state a couple of quality programs there back at home and and there's one game on the schedule that i think is really interesting in in your pre gac schedule which by the way gets underway in searcy on december 2nd you're on the road at dallas taking on dallas baptist that's the team you faced in the NCAA tournament last year. And so it's going to be not only a, a, a nice matchup from last year in that, but also that uh, you'll, you'll come back maybe more full strength and, and uh, they'll get a chance to see you more like who you know the team to be. Yeah, that, that was the whole thought process in that. As soon as uh, I knew Devontae was going to be um, shorthanded, so to speak, and not full strength, I knew immediately we needed to schedule Dallas Baptist, whether it was here at our place or there at their place, uh, just to kind of have a sense of of closure. I think a little bit too, <laughs> not not only closure but also you know moving forward and more of a measuring stick is you know has we have we improved and um, you know we feel like we're we're playing uh, you know three national tournament teams, uh, our first two Augustana and, and Northern State and then Dallas Baptist, I and mean, we. We feel like we're going to be tested right out of the gate, and uh, it, it may be a little ambitious, but we feel like that's that's where we need to be from a scheduling standpoint. With the end game in mind, is is uh, competing for a championship and, and trying to get back to the NCAA tournament, which will be tough. Uh, but we feel like we have a senior uh, laden team, uh, a lot of experience, and uh, coming off the success that we had last year, we feel like we're we're poised for another step. Well, Coach, I mean, you, when, you, when you schedule strong outside of the conference and if you're able to take care of business within the conference, uh, that really does look good later on when uh, they're, they're making those regional rankings. So uh, it's it's a challenging schedule, but I, I think it's going to be an interesting one for you, and we wish you success in that again, taking on Harding on the road and then back to W.T. Watson December 4th for the first home GAC game as you all will take on Henderson State. Coach Andy Sharp, thank you so much for taking time with us today here again. The Mule Riders picked second according to the preseason GAC coaches poll. Success to you all this season. Thanks, Joey. Appreciate all you do. 